Hey guys, it's TJ, your friendly neighbourhood youth worker, and I'm going to talk to you today about planning your menus for your DOV award. Now, menu planning is actually pretty important because one of the 20 conditions of DOV is that you cook and eat a substantial meal every day. So, planning the right menu is going to have a huge difference in terms of how much you end up enjoying your expedition. Okay, it's uh, meant to give you enough energy to get you through the day. It's going to prevent or help to prevent loads of first aid issues from happening in the first place. It will keep you warm at night. If you eat properly, you will actually be warmer at night in your sleeping bags. And it's going to help to start repairing the damage that you've done throughout the day from all the exercise that you've been doing. Now, before we get into what's good and what's not in terms of eating, Let's work out how much you're meant to eat in the first place. Right, now the average person on an average day will eat about 2,000 calories each day. But on a DOV expedition, you're doing a lot more exercise. So you're going to have to eat a little bit more to make up for that extra loss of energy. So each day on a DOV expedition, what would be counted as a substantial meal would be something which is about 2,500 calories per day. Now... We're not quite used to calorie counting, or I'm guessing we're not quite used to calorie counting, uh, so it will take a bit of getting used to, but th uh, when I say calories, don't just immediately go and look at the packet and just say, you know, oh, that's how many calories. Have a look down the ingredients to see what kind of calories they are. Uh, so, breakfast-wise, I would say go with about 700 to 800 calories per day. Those energies you want lots of carbs, lots of energy kind of food, you know, a bit, probably a bit more sugar than you would in, in other meals, um, but just something so, you know, that's going to kickstart you in the morning, get you up, get you packed, uh, and get you walking. For lunch, it's, it's more of a top-up, so we're looking at 300 to 500 calories per day, um, and, and that's, uh, again, you know, just to, whatever you kind of lost from breakfast is just to keep you topped up until you get to the campsite. Uh, finally, you'll get to campsite, and uh, you'll have dinner, and I normally say uh, about 600 to 700 calories uh, for dinner. Dinner's a slightly different meal. You're not going to go out and walk, okay? So think about what you want to eat. You want some carbs um, at night because that's going to help your body to stay warm, and when you get into your sleeping bag and stuff, that'll help your sleeping bag to be warmer rather than just having something which is low-carb. Soups and stuff are great for that initial energy, that initial heat, but once the soup wears off, you know, uh, your body's got nothing else. So have, have you know, pastas and rices and things like that to, to keep you going throughout the night. But also think about the, the repair uh, that needs to be done on your body um, from all the exercise that you've been doing throughout the day. So protein um, is, is a really important um, ingredient to have in your, in your menus. That leaves a little bit of a gap. So uh, that's there for our snacks, okay? We all like a good snack. And we've got about 600 to 700 calories um, for snacks. Okay, so let's move on to uh, some tips I can share with you on uh, what to think about when you're menu planning. Okay, so when it comes to uh, DV expedition food, you can pretty much eat most things, okay? Um, now, I'm not a nutritionist, okay? Uh, and I'm not qualified in, in kind of uh, giving, you know, medical advice or anything like that, so please feel free to like speak to a professional, speak to your GP, um, or, you know, if you want, it, it, Google it, um, you know, the, just be careful with Google, obviously. Um, but there's three types of foods that I'd be really, really careful of. The first one is salt, okay? Now, salt is an essential mineral for your body. You need to have a little bit of it for your body to function properly, and if you don't have enough, your body will stop functioning, and it will happen quite quickly. But if you have too much of it, your body will also stop functioning properly and that again will happen really, really quickly. Um, now, it's not much that we need. It's about two to three grams on a normal day that we should eat. Um, and on, on a DOV expedition, you may want to get that up to four, um, but don't take any more than six uh, grams of salt in your, in your daily food um, on, a, on an expedition, just because you might end up having too much. Okay, what you could do is then maybe also have like a, one of these kind of special drinks or, you know, drink sachet type things that has a slightly higher salt content for when you're dehydrated or, you know, if, if you've kind of got fluid loss problems um, that you can kind of 
come back to should you have any problems and you need that salt. So be careful of salt, but it is important, so make sure you get the number right. The second thing to be careful of is fats, okay? Uh, now there's lots of different types of fats, um, some good and some bad. Now the good fats will actually be good for your body system, so you know, they will uh, not only give you energy, but they can actually improve your, your circuitry system, um, apparently. So um, look for things like unsaturated fats. They're meant to be really, really good for you. Um, the, the fats that are bad for you are kind of any other types of fats. Um, it does depend on where they come from, um, and you'd have to do a little bit more research on that, uh, on the individual types of foods. But, you know, things that are fried, those are going to be bad. Okay, uh, crisps are not good types of fat. They don't uh, break down in your body. They just sit there and they clog up your system. And over time, they just build up. Okay, um, and so you might you might eat them thinking, oh, I'll have some food. That's some food in my system, but actually you're not getting anything out of it. Um, you, it's too expensive for your for your body to try and break it down um, effectively enough. And and so you're not going to get the energy you think you're getting out of it. So be very careful of fried um, anything that's fried. Um, the third type of food um, that I'd be quite, that I'd think a little bit more about is sugar. Sugar is really important. Um, it's a really fast releasing energy um, and you need that kickstart. Things like in the morning or throughout the day if you're feeling a bit low. But be really careful of sugar, okay? Uh, because sugar releases energy really, really quickly, it runs out really, really quickly, and so it stops releasing energy really, really quickly. And so you end up going on this cycle of up-down uh, in, in your physical health, the energy levels, your mental uh, you know, uh, capacities, your emotional uh, well-being. All of that uh, will start going through the cycle of high-low, high-low. Um, so be really, really careful um, and get a good mix in. Don't just rely on uh, sugar. Um, to, to get you through the day, uh, you want a good mix of fast and slow releasing energies. Now, the other thing to think about is how is food meant to be kept? Okay, um, if it needs to be kept frozen or refrigerated, stay clear of it. As much as we probably like to take a uh, fridge and freezer with us, we're not going to be able to. Uh, cool boxes are far too clunky. Um, cool bags. Um, are a possibility but again you know how do you keep the cold inside the bag without carrying those extra you know blocks of ice and stuff like that um, and it just means that you're just carrying more weight um, for no reason because you're not going to be able to drink that okay or eat those those ice blocks um, you, you're just going to have to carry it around and then you get to day two you've, you've eaten the food but you're still going to have to carry these things around so just stay clear of uh, anything that needs to be fridged or freezed. Um, and on top of that is uh, anything fresh, fresh fruit, fresh veg, fresh meat, stay clear of it again. Um, the exception is maybe day one lunch um, because everything should be fine, That's, you know, you're having about the same time as you would at, say a normal school lunch. Um, but anything after that, it, you know, there, there is a really good possibility it's not going to be good, okay, um, and it will make you ill. Now if it does make you ill, that's not just going to ruin your expedition, it's going to ruin everybody else's expedition and that might have a whole heap of other complications such as, you know, who's going to pay for the next expedition um, uh, and, and, and things like that. So, and when do you do it? Um, so, steer clear of, of, of fresh food, um, especially for anything from dinner on day one onwards because you're not going to be able to keep it fresh and there's going to be no guarantee it's going to be edible um, by the time you get to the campsite. Now the other thing to be careful of is packaging, okay? Um, everything these days that we seem to buy seems to come in multiple levels of packaging. Now the problem we have when we're out on DAV is um, the vast majority of campsites that are used by DAV groups don't have waste um, facilities. So there are no bins um, and you tend to have to take your rubbish home with you or carry it around on your expedition until you find a bin uh, appropriate to put it into. Um, so, you know, get rid of as much packaging as possible. When you're at home, get as, as much stuff out um, and try and find, you know, tubs that you can that you can reuse while you're out on the expedition or, you know, try and stuff everything in. Get foods which can be stuffed um, and, and get squashed. 
and that will help reduce how much waste you produce, which will then mean that will reduce the amount of waste you're going to end up having to carry, you know. Uh, plan your menus as a team. Plan to cook together as a team. Don't just be like one person cook, eat their food, and then leave it to the rest of the uh, rest of the team uh, to do their bits. Everyone kind of get together and try and plan either the same meal or to plan to have all your food, uh, you know, cook different foods, but have it all at the same time. Um, there's a huge bonding experience that can happen, loads of positive memories that can come out of it. But also in terms of your assessing, you know, one of the things assessors are going to look for is how well do you get on as a team? How well do you work together? Um, and that's going to be one of those key experiences that those, exp that those assessors are going to be looking out for. Right, my next tip is get as many calories as you can in as small a space and weight as possible. Um, the idea behind it is you're going to be carrying everything. So do you really want to be carrying, you know, kilos of food on you if you can find something that meets your calorie count and just weighs like a tiny proportion of that? Um, now, the, 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 the con to that, because the, the pro is obviously you're not, you're not carrying as much weight, um, which makes your bag a lot lighter. Uh, the con to it is, you know, you might need to have lots of food just to fill you up. Uh, so what you could do is, is find something which um, is quite light, but is quite filling as well. So you, you're almost having two meals. Um, you have something for your calories and something for, you know, to fill up your body. A couple of extra tips uh, just to help you with your menu planning is things like um, thinking about how easy is your food to make. Okay, you don't want to spend hours making it. Um, especially if you're, you know, if it's starting to get dark or the weather's not good, um, you know, get your food done, eat it and enjoy the rest of the day. So how easy is it to make and how easy is it to clean? Okay, again, you don't want to spend hours trying to wash up, you know, scrubbing off burn stains of everything. So think about how are you going to clean it? How quick are you going to be able to clean it? Try making your food um, and, and eating it before the expedition. Um, there's so many options when it comes to food and sometimes we have to be quite creative as well um, in terms of flavours and styles. Um, try making it. How easy is it to make at home on your hob? Try making it on a tranger because cooking it on a tranger or on a gas cooker, uh, an expedition gas cooker is going to be totally different. Um, and then try it. Okay, The amount of times I've been out on expedition, people have bought things like ration packs um, or uh, hydrated packs, dehydrated packs, um, maybe they're, they're, they're mixing styles, Chinese food with Indian food and, and seeing what happens with that. And they get to the campsite and they go to eat it and they hate the taste of it. Um, unfortunately, you know, you're going to have to eat it because you can't throw it away anywhere. Otherwise, you're just going to have rotting food being carried around for the rest of the day. So, you know, try your food, try making it because you want to do things quickly, efficiently, um, and you want to enjoy it as well. Try and find food which um, is going to clog up your system for the expedition. Um, it might sound a bit funny, but you know the last thing you want to do on an expedition um, is have to go to the loo, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's nowhere to actually go to the loo. So uh, try and reduce the amount you have to do that. Now you're not going to be able to stop, you know, number ones. You're not going to be able to stop yourself going for a wee. Uh, because water is, is really essential for when we're out. But when it comes to, you know, going for um, a number two, um, that can get really complicated. And if you haven't had specific training in how to deal with that, you know, the best you're going to be able to do on a, on, a regular, on a regular expedition is to do exactly the same as what dog owners have to do with dogs, and that's pooper scoops. Um, and the other thing to think about when it comes to food uh, planning is think about who in your team has allergies. Uh, what special dietary requirements do they have? Are they vegetarian? Do they have any other, you know, religious uh, reasons for not eating certain types of foods? Um, and and that will dictate what order you go in. Um, but also, what things shouldn't you bring? Okay, if someone's got a really severe nut allergy, don't bring things with nuts in as a team because ultimately you're going to be cooking together. You don't want that cross contamination affecting your team member because if your team member goes down with a severe um, allergic reaction. That's it. Right, so that was some tips and advice and uh, just a, a few little bits of information for you to think about. But do feel free to, you know, check out Google. There's lots of information out there on, on other tips and things that you can do uh, for your expedition. And uh, keep an eye out on my channel because I should hopefully soon be releasing um, an example menu that you could potentially use. Peace.